Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been so long. I've been procrastinating, but also busy and tired with work and also probably a little vitamin D deficient, um, <laughs> which is why I've been tired. But I'm very happy to be back. I have loved, honestly, all the comments and the replies. Like shout out to all of you who wrote me who either are thinking of going to L&D or have recently started or have been in L&D like I'm loving honestly the feedback and talking to everybody like I started this channel because I really wanted to make videos like the ones I wasn't really seeing like I felt like when I started L&D there were more videos about other specialties and I had a lot of questions and I just wanted more of a community the L&D community so I'm so happy please keep on writing tell me like your experiences tell me like what else you want me to go over in the videos like i am down and i will be more consistent um so honestly thank you everyone who watched even if you just watched a little bit like trust me i have a short attention span i don't watch every second of every youtube video i see so honestly come take what you need or what you want and you know keep on leaving comments subscribe share the channel with your nurse friends i love it so this video we're gonna go um and piggyback <laughs> off of the first video more tips for the labor and delivery nurse um i'm still new but i'm a little less new i'm almost two years in um l and d which is really like 10 years in nurse years um so i have some more tips that i've 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 thought about and i think would be helpful um that i've thought about a lot now that i'm like older as a nurse so first tip and this is the one that i struggle with the most for myself get organized or deal with the consequences so obviously as a nurse in general you know i think the stereotype of a nurse is type a making making your lists and labeling your lines naturally i'm not like that i'm not <laughs> type a at all um i'm not like the biggest mess but like patient care and safety comes first and then all the other labor like administrative stuff comes after and I get that labeling line and stuff can be for safety but like maybe there's a peanut ball in the middle of the floor right right like sue me anyway but I have found that keeping your room stocked is a big game changer as well as like just like being prepared for a delivery. If you know your patient may deliver, let's say you have a mold tip or you have someone you come into shift, she's seven, a hundred and zero, she's probably delivering on your shift, right? So in my hospital, our rooms have these tables that we stock for everything delivery. So we have like delivery table kit, the kind of like instrument kit. Um, you can put sutures in there. You can put like a... Uh, Peri care stuff like chucks and postpartum ice packs and soap and water for the the doctor after delivery and laps for the doctor like if you know your patient is a hemorrhagist you can have pull the cytotec and have it ready or whatever your hospital allows I noticed that when I don't stock my room and I'm like oh i'll have time to do it later i end up doing the delivery and the doctor's like i need a pack of labs and i'm like oh i didn't get it in my head so i have to call out and that's wasting time and it's kind of like then i have to call out and one of my other colleagues has to get the labs and you know that nurse may be busy so i'm trying to drill it in my head to pre-stock everything when i have the time obviously there's sometimes like during the shift you really have no time like you're just running around but if you do and i'm I'm mostly saying this to myself stock beforehand like kind of preemptively stock stuff like you know if you know that a certain attending likes certain sutures or like always use light like you know just it'll make your life easier and if there's emergency you won't be like scrambling around you know oh i have this here and this here i also will say what has been a game changer for me is a fanny pack now um i don't know if anyone is not allowed to wear fanny packs for like uniform rule purposes but i have my work bag that i bring and i have my fanny pack that i wear on my shift and it's a game changer like obviously we have scrubs and our scrubs typically have one pocket one like breast pocket and then our pants have maybe one pocket but like you bend over and your pens fall out or your scissors 
I don't have time for that. And I need all my stuff. I need it when I need it. So I wear a fanny pack and a lot of my colleagues do too. And we put pens in there, alcohol swabs, flushes, 18 gauges for IVs. Um, you can have utero tonics in there, like if you're going to the OR. If your hospital allows you to pull the utero tonics preemptively, I would say just remember to put them back in the Omni cell or wherever if you don't use them. Um, markers, scissors, syringes, um, labels for your bags, tape. That's what I keep in mind. That's mostly it. Like um, alcohol, like stuff that I use all the time alcohol swabs, pens, gum for myself, eye drops for myself, I have dry eyes, um, hair clips if you need them, lots of flushes, lots of 18 gauges, smelling salts. So we actually um, have little smelling salts that we like to keep on us. So let's say postpartum, you're taking your patient to the bathroom and a lot of times the patient vagal vagals or faints or almost, you know, they just delivered. Sometimes they lose a lot of blood, unfortunately, and you have moments sometimes where your patient gets a little lightheaded. So we carry those around in case we need to pop them. Um, so yeah, a fanny pack is a big game changer um, and it just helps you be more efficient. And efficiency and labor and delivery is key. A bunch of things happen we can't control. We get a bunch of surprises. So it is good and useful and efficient to just have little ways to organize yourselves. Um, what else? So that was the first tip, huge tip. Um, get organized. Second tip. Um, I'm gonna skip around. Okay, anticipatory guidance. So you may have talked about this in nursing school, but anticipatory, anticipatory guidance is when you give your patients, you tell them what to anticipate, right? Um, and as l &D nurses, we give a lot of education anyway. I honestly do think a lot of our job is educating and telling the patients what to expect. Um, I do find that a lot of my patients, uh, particularly first time, um, people who are pregnant, there's a lot of stuff they don't know about the process. They don't know about the hospital, especially about inductions. So a lot of it, a lot of our time spent together is me telling them what to expect or, or what you could possibly expect. Like if a prime up comes in for an induction, I like to go through all three methods of induction. We go over a side attack, we go over the balloon, we go over Pitocin, we go over Aram and like what it may feel like when your water breaks, like some sensations you may have in active labor, nausea, the kind of like chills sensation, like rectal pressure, like all this stuff I like to tell people. And I say it may not happen to you, but this is some stuff you can expect. So people don't freak out when something happens. Um, postpartum you will still be bleeding a little bit but you always also tell them for instance like if you see this amount of blood or you like soak this you soak this many pads in this much time then you tell us right so I guess this is when I probably don't even have to tell you like you're educating anyway all the time in L&D but it is nice it 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 makes the patients feel like you have their best interest at heart it makes them feel I think safer a little bit more calm and like oh, okay I feel a little nauseous, but you know, my nurse told me I can expect this. So my nurse told me this may be a sign of progress. Um, so yeah, I feel like that helps. Um, next tip, um, advocate for yourself or your patient. Um, I think I talked about this in my first video, but that as nurses, we are advocates. Labor and delivery, there are a lot of things that go on like obstetric, obstetric violence obstetric racism and you may be put in situations and feel like this doesn't sound right this doesn't sound fair um and of course i think when you first begin you may be scared or nervous talk to your charge nurse about it i know a lot of facilities are understaffed right now so they may be trying to give you like a mole tip and like a lady on mag or like two mole tips and it's like realistically I'm gonna miss one of these deliveries if you give me these like you know if you don't feel safe or you feel like you need someone to watch one patient but just speak up and like 
just speak up protect yourself protect your patient that can be a whole nother video though um but even if you start off slowly with advocating just remember like you're here for your patient you always want to you also want to protect yourself like you know um next tip will be go at your own pace um i know which is wild to say in L D because i'm sure your charge nurses are just like come on girl let's deliver this patient and get her upstairs you know because people are burden all the time so i mean as long as you know you know i would love to just be able to <laughs> stay with my patients literally for days and just let them do their thing but unfortunately you know people are here for inductions or you know people want to have their babies so you do have to put some pep in your step but um in this case when i say go at your own pace i kind of just mean in the broader sense so for instance like especially if you're at a magnet hospital um you know you're encouraged to go back to school get your certifications whether it's like lactation counselor whether it's certified in efm certified in ob what have you go back and get your masters become a midwife become an fmp uh -uh. and you'll be looking around all your colleagues and you're like wow she's in school he's in school she's a lactation consultant and he's um, a midwife and you'll be like god because i thought this to myself i was like oh i have to hurry up and go back to school i have to do this do this i'm only two years almost two years in the game and like realistically there's so much i'm still learning to be a proficient lnd nurse and i'm just now i think feeling comfortable enough to take a certification but i was rushing myself i was like oh my god all these other people are doing this and it's like girl you just started like don't be overwhelmed especially because you're going to study for the certification you have to still be a regular proficient nurse right you have your family life you have your pets or whatever you exercise and you visit in family you have a partner or whatever it's a lot and don't feel rushed even though you may feel pressured by whoever you can do it you know whenever you want don't feel rushed you know similarly do things at your own pace that comes to scheduling too so you'll meet nurses who are like doing six in a row and that's their thing right <laughs> um the thing i love about nurses and nurses there's every type of person you can imagine there's some that are like i can do one shift and i want one off and maybe i'll do two in a row but then i want a whole bunch there's that person and there's i'm doing six in a row all the time because i want my chunk off and that's them like I think you should live in your truth and do whatever makes you happy. If you want to do OT three times a week, do that. If you know for a fact you can barely get through your three shifts and you don't want to do OT except maybe Christmas, do that. Like, that's another don't feel pressured. Like, you'll meet nurses who are like, you know, I'm just grinding. I'm doing this OT. If they can do that, I love that. You like it, I love it. But if you know that if you do OT or overtime and you're working with like one brain cell because you're so tired don't do that that's not safe and don't do it <laughs> um so go at your own pace i think can be applied to a lot of things but like the beauty of nursing and the schedule especially in hospitals is that you can kind of make your own schedule and if you have that flexibility and that freedom you should use it to make yourself happy don't do it to make yourself miserable like personally i do like a good three in a row i just like to knock it out um and it is hard but i also just like to have like a good amount of days off like i feel like my sleep and my appetite is messed up if i do like one on one off two on one on, you know so i personally like to do three in a row but i know some people are like i will never do a three in a row. and that's completely live your best life live in your truth that goes for ot that goes you know don't feel pressured by your facility to work overtime like if you're understaffed, you know, it's not your problem as a nurse, you know, if you want to help out, do that. Like, sometimes if I want a little extra money or I have a trip coming up, I'll do overtime. But, you know, don't feel forced. Do things at your own pace. And finally, I'll say this in every video, last tip, give yourself grace. Go easy on yourself. Um, this is a very tough and demanding job. Um, if you are a woman or you identify as a woman, 
chances are you're socialized to give yourself to everybody anyway it's another video <laughs> um but also in nursing it's a very giving and self-sacrificing profession right so we do a lot each shift and we can be really hard on ourselves i know i used to be really hard on myself when i thought i was going too slow or making a mistake or not being a good nurse like as you're being safe and your patients are happy with you and you're not like fighting people or like you're not being incompetent you're probably doing a great job it's just really easy i think for us to give grace to other people and not ourselves right so i think that's something that does come with time and it does i think come with more competency and skill um but at a point you have to if you are doing your best you have to know like you know no i'm not at the level of a 14, a nurse who's been here for 14 years, because I just, I, I just started. Um, so I have to be easy on myself while working hard and progressing, but like beating yourself up for over like little things will only like stress you out and it's easier said than done. Like when I recorded that first video, tips for nursing, I was beating myself up all the time, but now it's like I'm doing the best I can also, um, I think there are a lot of unrealistic expectations for nurses. Like, we only have two hands. Like, like, if you ask me to give you three things during the delivery, you're getting those one at a time, as I only have two hands, right? Don't beat yourself. You're not, you're not a super human, right? Like, do what you can, do your best, and at the end of the shift, pat yourself on the back, whether literally or metaphorically, and just know you did the best you could, you know? Um, so <laughs> those are my tips. Um, thanks for being patient with this video. I know it was a while. Um, again, I literally just love the comments and I like look forward, look forward to hearing from all of you. Let me know what else you wanna hear me do. Um, I was gonna do a what's in my work bag video, but I feel like it was pretty straightforward. It was just like my stethoscope and pins and stuff. <laughs> Um, anyway, thank you for all the support and have a good shift if you're going to work.